He was also the president's first indigenous chief of staff, chief of army staff. And in these military roles, he had a major influence on the president as a young officer. It was therefore not a surprise that the president specifically asked me to represent him on this occasion, not being able to attend this funeral personally. And he further asked me to deliver this funeral oration here. What shall be said of us when we are no longer here? In General Adebayo's case, his departure has elicited tremendous outpouring of love and nostalgia across the country. For General Adebayo, the reaction since the Lord called him on March 8, 2017, have all been positive. As one of the pioneers of Nigeria's most enduring institutions, the military, General Adebayo played a critical role in rescuing Nigeria from the abyss of disintegration. Not only did he advise against the use of force in resolving the Biafran crisis, in what turned out to be one of the most clairvoyant statements on the war, he declared in a broadcast before the war, and I quote, I need not tell you what horror, what devastation, and what extreme human suffering will attend the use of force. When it's all over and the smoke and dust have lifted and the dead are buried, we shall find, as other people have found, that it has all been futile, entirely futile in solving the problems that we set out to solve, end of quote. But General Adebayo was no peacenik. When the situation demanded as governor of the West, he worked hard alongside others to protect the region from the onslaught of the rebel army at the time by halting the advance into Lagos in Ore. Immediately the civil war ended, though he was readily at hand to play the role of the post-war conciliator as officer requested by General Yakubu Gowan to chair the Committee on Reconciliation and Integration of the Igbos back into Nigeria. By most accounts, he handled the task, the task admirably. General Debao's life was a light-bearing one. Though kindled in the ancient town of Iyi in Ekiti State, Nigeria, his light in Nigeria, his light shone brightly for the world to see. In an obituary in the Times of London on April 18th, 2017, he was described as the, and I quote, governor of the western region of Nigeria, whose attempts to promote the peace and prevent the Biafran war failed with devastating consequences for the nation, end of quote. Whatever may be said of what eventually spiraled into the civil war, General Adebayo's pioneering role in the quest for peace did not go unnoticed. In fact, this became his most significant imprimatur on all through his life. As the oldest living military officer at the time of his death, his rise through the military was as meteoric as it was admirable. From serving as the ADC to the last colonial, colonial governor general, James Robertson, from 1957 to 1958, he chalked up a string of first, first Nigerian general staff officer, first indigenous chief of army staff, chairman of the Organization of African Unity Defense Planning Committee, 1963 to 1965, first Nigerian army officer to attend the Imperial Defense College, where he was during the 1966 school, governor of Western Region, commandant Nigerian Defense Academy. His military trajectory was in a way, in a way was a study in Nigeria's history. Even in retirement, he remained passionately committed to the unity of Nigeria. His life of meritorious service to God and to country is a testament of the faithfulness, diligence, humility, and integrity of this man. His impact has clearly reverberated beyond the confines of his first love, the military, and across all spheres of life. Many remembered his role during the dark years of military rule as one leader who supported the struggle the democratic struggle in various ways. He was unafraid to speak the truth to power. With his house serving as the foundational headquarters for NADECO, the National Democratic Coalition, it was a fitting recognition of his steadfastness that his first son, Adini, was elected as the first civilian governor 
of his native Ekiti state, a state that he worked so hard to found. In the last years of his glorious life, though General Adebayo remained an unapologetic nationalist, he challenged the leadership of the southwest of Nigeria to relieve and revive the glories of the old western region. As he said, and I quote, I will all earn the respect of the people by leaving an enduring legacy that defined the Yoruba heritage. The Yoruba political elite must now be compelled to do better. He was particularly concerned that the West had fallen behind in education, in agriculture, and in the provision of social services. And he urged that a renaissance of the Western region was called for and immediately necessary. As scripture says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. The inheritance is not money or property. It's a legacy of character, of patriotism, of love of country, and service to the people. And we thank the Lord for the life and times of this good man. It behoves those of us that remain on this side of eternity as we gather to celebrate this great man of honor to reflect and rekindle our lives with the light from the life of the general, that the dark aspects of our nationhood might be illuminated by his unyielding search for peace and justice in our land. We can never thank the late general enough for his service and sacrifice to the nation. One must also not take for granted the labor of this redoubtable hero. Indeed, we owe him a duty to continue to pursue the values which his iconic life represented. It is for this reason that the federal government of Nigeria has decided, in recognition of his service to Nigeria, to rename the federal university in Ekiti, the Adeinka Adebayo Federal University. On behalf of the government and people of Nigeria, I offer heartfelt condolences to the Adebayo family, to the people of Ekiti State, to the Nigerian Armed Forces, and all those who hold him dear. We shall all miss him greatly. Nigeria's acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, there uh, just giving a speech on behalf of President Mohamedou Buhari uh, on the life and times of uh, the late uh, General, Major General Adinka Adebayo, a former military governor of the old western region. Uh, and of course, uh, we heard there from the acting president, Professor Oshibajo, uh, the good life of the late uh, Major General Adebayo. Uh, his rise in the, uh, the military and of course uh, some of the uh, many things that he did uh, to show that uh, he was a man who was so truly committed uh, to his profession as a military officer of uh, of in his lifetime and for the good of uh, uh, not just the old western Your region but Nigeria as a whole. Let's now return to the live coverage right about now. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I am completely overwhelmed by what I have seen today and what I have heard. On behalf of our family, we say a very, very big thank you to Mr. President, Mr. Acting President, indeed the entire government, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for the honor that has been done our father today. Had my father been alive to 
hear this announcement.